Welcome. This is the Tennessee uh, end of course algebra 2 practice test. This is the first practice test anyway. Question number 25. The question says which function does not have an inverse function? Now the first thing we have to understand is what an inverse is. It's essentially if we switched x and y. So if I was working on this problem and I was doing a for instance, I'm going to change it from function notation, which is where it has this f of x thing, to slope intercept form where I talk about adding y to this situation. This would be the, the original function. So what I need to do is flip it and, and the values of x and y or flip their placement and then just solve out for y to figure out what the inverse is. So instead of having y here I'd have x. This would be 2y instead of 2x. And then I would just work it so y is by itself. I'm trying to get it to uh, slope intercept form now. Divide everything by 2 and you'd end up with y equals one half x minus seven over two. Now to determine whether it's an inverse function or not, what I need to do is just graph it and do the vertical line test. So I would go down to negative seven over two, which is almost four, somewhere down in this general vicinity. I'm even gonna make the marks. And I go up one and over two. So I would just do this sort of thing. And this passes the vertical line test. So I do have an inverse function for that one. But instead of doing it by hand, which you're welcome to do, by the way, feel free to do that. We just thought we would show you how to do it uh, via the calculator. So I'm going to clear all these annotations off just a little bit. And then I'm going to flip on the screen calculator, which we finally got, uh, which was nice. You know, it's a nice change of pace. So the reality here is I'm going to plug everything in just like I would into the calculator. So um, as under, in under full disclosure, I should mention that uh, I went ahead and changed the window range to negative 20 and 20 just so I can get a look at, you know, kind of where I'm headed with it. So I'm going to type in 2x. So I'd go down here, type in 2. The under the link button there is the uh, variable button plus 7. And then I'd click down. I'm going to go ahead and graph them all at the same time. Uh, hit second, do the square root get my x, close my parentheses. It's an issue here that you make sure that you close the parentheses, otherwise it's dangerous. And then I'm going to click down and I'll do the square root again and it's negative 6 x plus 9 and close the parentheses after that because that's how the calculator wants you to put it in. And then finally 8 minus 3 x squared. So it should match up completely. And then I'm just going to graph them just for the visual. And by the way, if you didn't change the, uh, the window range to make it a little bit bigger, you might not see the last one, or a even B in this case. So these are what all of them look like. Now what I'm going to do now is go back and sort of clear out some of them really quickly. I'm going to delete this just so you can get a look at what they originally look like. And then I'm going to do them one at a time so we can eliminate them and have an easier way to look at it than trying to work the magic of going through all of them. But that's what they should look like originally. And I guess I should get rid of that squared too, eh? Now, I'm going to type in 2x plus 7 again. I don't know why I deleted it and why I also forgot to do um, plus there. There. So I'll graph this. Now, if I want to know what the inverse looks like, there's a function, there's button pressing that I can do to get there. The first thing that I need to do is go to the draw menu. So hit the second button and then go to the one that says program and above it it says draw. And it should take you to something that looks like this. Now if you click down the draw menu, there's actually a uh, number eight, which you could just hit uh, the draw menu and then click eight if you like. It says draw INV. That means draw the inverse. So hit enter there. And then uh, I'm going to pick what I'm going to draw. Obviously, I've been doing this earlier, so the one blinking is the one we're looking at. I need to tell it which one I want to draw the inverse of. So I need to go over to the one that says VARS. And I'm going to look at, uh, which is variables, obviously. I'm going to click over into the Y variables, because it's a Y equals scenario. Uh, and I'm going to do a function. So I'm going to hit Enter here. And then I'm going to pick Y1. Then I can hit Enter, and it should draw it for me. And as you can see, this one passes the vertical line test, the one that I just drew. So that one works just fine. No need to worry about that at all. So I can go back and look at uh, y sub 2 if I want. I'll delete all this out. And I'll make it the y sub 1, which is convenient. I'm going to do x here. 
close it out. By the way, you are welcome to draw the inverses for all of these, and it does work perfectly. I just wanted to do them one at a time so I could make a point about it. But if you, I mean, it's a lot of extra button pressing for no real reason. So hit second, go into the draw menu, click eight, and that should take you to this. Draw the inverse. Tell them that you want to go to variables, and I'm going to pick, once again, y sub 1. If you do all four, you just pick y sub 1, 2, 3, and 4 in different steps, and it does it for you. This is the second one. Once again, even though it's tight, it passes the vertical line test, so I'm good there. Uh, the next one. Oops. Go to y equals, clear all this out, and then type in the square root of negative 6x plus 9 and I forgot and I hit square instead of square root because I was not paying attention don't do that or you'll cost yourself extra time for no reason second and then did it okay so it worked out that I could graph it and I'll just graph it really quickly that works great uh, then I'll go to program again hit number 8 to go to draw inverse go to variables y equals pick the function go down to w get y sub 1 again hit enter once again passes the vertical line test, everything's fine. So we can assume that the answer is going to be D, that it does not have an inverse function. But just to make sure, we're going to check it. So clear all that out. And then I'm going to type in 8 minus 3x squared. So I get 8 minus 3x squared there. I'll graph it. It's a good idea to go ahead and graph the original just to make sure. Now if I do the inverse, number 8, uh, I'm going to go to the y variables since function, and it's y1. I'm going to hit enter again, and it graphs it for me. And as you can see, this one fails the uh, sl uh, the vertical line test, so it does not have an inverse function. It does have an inverse relation, just not a function. So your answer to number 25 is D, and if you do it yourself, it's a lot faster. I just wanted to take a little bit of extra time to make sure that I covered it. So good luck.